So on the screen here, I have three neurons, although you can only see one of them in their entirety. So first we have neuron one, where you can only see the end of its axon and its axon terminals. Then we have neuron two, which is the neuron we can see all of. And then we have neuron three, where you can just see its dendrites and its cell body and the beginning of its axon. Neurons are responsible for transporting information, and they take information from cells, so information could be released by neuron one, and then neuron two could be receiving it, and then it travels through the soma, down the axon, and then from there onto the axon terminals where it can be released onto other cells. And it does this through an electrical signal which is called an action potential. And it really is an electrical signal that moves down the length of the cell. And so it starts off in the dendrites where the neuron receives signals from the other cells. And these signals can either be ex excitatory or, or they can be inhibitory. With excitatory messages making it more likely for a cell to pass on a message and inhibitory messages trying to, to stop the cell from sending along any messages. And the cell actually won't, the neuron right here, won't send a signal, won't have an action potential until it has heard enough excitatory messages. But once this excitatory threshold has been reached, the neuron will generate an action potential which will travel down the axon to the end of the neuron. And so a few things about action potentials. So as I mentioned before, it can only happen if a certain threshold is reached. But once it has been reached, an action potential is generated no matter if the signal exceeds the threshold by a lot or a little. And once the threshold point is reached, it always sends a signal of the same size down the length of the axon. And another thing about the action potential is that it is all or nothing. It either fires or it doesn't fire. End of story. And after it has been fired, it really can't be stopped. So maybe, maybe think of it like a gun, right? If you pull the trigger, it will either fire or, or it doesn't fire. And that's, those are really the only two options. So the action potential is always the same intensity. No matter how far the excitatory signals move it above the threshold, it is always the same size. This leads to an interesting question, which is that if the signal, if the action potential is always the same size, how do we experience intensity? For example, how can we tell the difference between a dim light and a bright light? So rather than having a small action potential for a dim light and a big action potential for a bright light, intensity is actually encoded with frequency. So the neuron will have more action potentials for bright light. And so to make that easier to think about, imagine that these dashes are, are neurons and that um, any lines I put through them is that neuron firing. So for a dim light, we might have a few action potentials, but for a really bright light, we might have more. And they'll all be the same size, there will be more of them. And so that's the way that the neurons code intensity, not through size of action potential, but through frequency of action potential.